Hey yo, it's Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk. Thanks for tuning in. On this episode, I have a replay analysis and a combo, how to lose proc. How to lose proc horavka. Nanamandis is in his VK 100.01 tier eight, Russian heavy tank. You can see that this is just a big old lumbering beast, has a really hard hitting gun and some pretty good armor for a tier 8. He's in a 510, which is a decent setup for this tank, but he's on a very open map, which is not a decent setup for this tank. Although there is no arty. Now we're back to a decent setup for this tank. So as far as the how to lose proc, if you just take a look at the mini map right off the bat, I think you get a good idea of one of the ways you can easily lose proc right off the bat. A Panther 8.8 .8 from Nona's team has driven all the way to Bravo one and there just isn't anybody on the entire flank on the one two line and that That's horrendously bad His team now owns three-fourths of the map and it is very very difficult to recover from that Provided your team doesn't also then do a similar thing say on the nine zero line But that hasn't happened and there's a few tanks going up the, the hill right there You can see that all of the mediums and even the two six three which is a pretty fast TD itself have realized that the 1-2 line is completely open and they are off to the races. So now I've got these guys surrounded. There's a scout doing his level best to help the guys cornered at about D6 to recover this a little bit, but you can see that the KR, the object, and the rest of them are starting to stack up on that ridge and eating alive the guys that are stuck down there on the 6 line to the east side of the track, so they're in big trouble. Nona came over that ridge with his turret turned to the right, kind of looking at those guys, and initially I was thinking that's a bad idea because you could get shot, but guess what? There is just isn't anybody on the one, two, three line, so it was best for him to keep his turret turned that way. So we're going to come up here, and Nona's going to start punishing the guys that are now trapped on this side of the tracks with the scout running around. There's an IS-3 up on the top over there on the tracks at about a six, and Nona just backs up, gets his reload, and about the time he's reloaded. Maybe just a little late coming back up. I think you pulled back a lot more than you needed to based on what's going on here, Nona. You could more or less just kind of hang out right near the edge of that and look for those shots. Nice zoomed in shot on these guys. This one takes you a while. I think I would have just taken it on the top of his turret and attempted to get into that hatch right there or zoomed out and looked for a different shot. I think what you're trying to get is maybe a side shot on his turret or something like that. That's just kind of a low percentage shot. You might have had a shot on the T-30 who's trying to top over there uh, as he's looking around. So either take that shot early and accept that, yeah, I'm going to have a low percentage and get your reload going on or look for a better shot on somebody like maybe this guy over here at this point is what you're doing. So put a shot into him. That's good. And now it's interesting here because I called this how to lose proc but the other team isn't necessarily losing the game right now they are losing it position wise so they're in a bad position as far as that goes but they are doing well as far as trading goes decently anyway they're only one tank in the hole but they've lost three of their tier nines to nona's only one so while it's not a completely commanding lead it's quickly becoming that way because of the terrain that Nona's team owns. And I think right here, Nona, you had definitely had a really good option to move up along the ridge right here. Well, just while he's taking on that T30, to move up along this ridge and start helping taking on the guys that are up here on the backside of their hill. And it takes you a while to kind of get going and you really get enamored of these guys who keep poking. And I think it's a good idea to punish them. They're actually a little bit out of draw range for the Alpine. So you did need to move a little bit forward. It's a good idea to make sure they don't come up and over and start shoot you, shooting you in the side, but you've got the object, you've got another tank, what, the 1390 and the KR are kind of all working them. And you'll notice that over here on the mini-map at about E0, you're getting lights on those guys, and now you're starting to move up right here. So what you've got to do when you start to get these kind of positions where you own most of the map is now it's about your position where you can get as many shots as possible and if you continued to move forward because again you, you get enamored of those guys and stop if you continue to move forward a little bit more you would have had shots on those dudes and on the guys up on E0 already and you probably would have taken down another 800,000 hit points by now and now you're just kind of finally getting up to where you need to be and that position roughly about where you are right there is where you needed to be 
I don't know if I'd have got that far forward because you were actually able to be seen by the ISM or maybe it was the ELC you saw you go by. So this is where we start to use that draw range, the difference between your being spotted range and the draw range, trying to live in this area right here, taking shots on guys you have lit who can't possibly see you. That's really what you want to be doing right there. There goes him. So I think you've probably left two, easily two shots on the table, maybe up to three or four by now. And you've got them cornered up there in the Bravo 6 and 7. The T28 is a bit of a problem. Not too bad. He's, he's kind of being covered up by all those buildings. So unless he moves forward to you, you don't have to worry about him for the moment. You've got all kinds of targets down here to take a shot on. And unfortunately, you come up and over, and there's a T30 looking right at you, and he just blaps you for 740 damage. I'd have pushed two right here. So I think that approach to that shot could have been a lot better. Obviously the Panther 8.8 .8 was being seen. He's been hit by those guys. So you knew that they had an idea people were poking right there and the 8.8 .8 gets out of your way. And now it's going to be much easier for you to side scrape right there. So I just think probably uh, 740 hit points you didn't need to give up, or at least you could have made more difficult for them to take from you. And we plop one there. Again, like I said, if you'd have gone to two, more than likely you'd have gone through that guy, although you did hit that highly sloped front armor, so you, it may have also bounced the the APCR round as well. So you got the tires looking at you. Good, good choice. Just pull back, avoid the heat from that guy, and then blop one into the IS-6. I like how you're looking to the right and kind of trying to check, and maybe you can see that T-28 coming, or you can see some buildings get knocked down. Up oh, there he is. So we've got the IS-6 looking at you. And even the gold round bounced off that angled top end based on his angle towards you, so not easy. But you've got him sandwiched, right? The as far as the position goes, again, this is this is a how to lose, and the other team did terribly on their position, but they've de done decently on their trading. Now they're now they're really they've been losing most of the game, but it's not been a complete face roll like you might expect based on how the positioning went early. It just took a long time to whittle him down and I think that Sturb S1 had a lot to do that he was able to keep people honest and nobody over there really had the hit points or wanted to just come up and over and start hitting those guys. There's that Sturb. So we'll get pointed at him, start zooming. I'd have just shot right there. But you wait. Oh man, just unlucky. So maybe my early shot without the dispersion as close as possible would have also missed. Taking a look at him. Let's see if we can get a shot on him again. Take the shot. Nope. Just centered it up. Took a while and there we go. All right, so we get that shot. It is a slightly derpy gun, so being careful about your shots will pay dividends. The T28 is still sitting there. Now that was a case, no, no. Once I shot that first shot on the stir, because this thing takes so to, so long to reload, I'd have already started moving forward to position myself for a shot on that T28, and I might have even just accepted that I probably wasn't getting wasn't going to get another shot on the stir and start looking for my next shot being on the T-28. But as it is, you get one on him, he gets behind a building. Plop another one on him here. Bam. Maybe go for the track, I don't know. You might have been trying to, but you went a little high. This is one of those infuriating shots right here. You're gonna come up and over, you got him, you keep coming, and oh, no, nope, that didn't work. And oh, the, <laughs> the tank rocks forward and you miss him low. I think you were definitely trying to look for the ram in there. I like the, how you kind of move him sideways and let the 8.8 .8 just shoot him in the side. I think you were also going for the ram, trying to get the shot and the ram coming in there. So that's a, definitely a good idea. If you'd have just stopped there, you wouldn't have had to worry about the rubble. But I think I probably would have done the same thing as far as a moving shot and look for a ram if I didn't happen to kill or take all of his hit points right there. Nice game, man. 4,371. I think you left some shots on the table. And for everybody else out there, that's a great way to lose proc. Either... Avoid or or don't go to the one two line or don't put anyone on five six or don't put anyone on nine zero. This map more than just about any other one in the game requires the team to cover all the flanks. There's a lot of maps and I've talked about it in a lot of my tactics talks where you don't really have to cover some some flanks. Usually you need only someone to look at it or make sure you're not completely being flanked. But this one this one requires a significant decent amount of force at each point because they are also reliant on each other across the middle. Which is, in my opinion, one of the reasons why Proc is such a good map in the game. All right, man, nice job. That's all I got on that. Hope you like what you saw. Hope you learned something along the way. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and we will see you.